Chinese President Xi Jinping is in Moscow to meet Vladimir Putin. This just days after the International Criminal Court charged the Russian president with war crimes in Ukraine. Ahead of the visit, she called this trip a journey of friendship, cooperation and peace. Beijing recently circulated a 12-point peace plan for the war in Ukraine that many have criticized for being short on specifics. China and Russia already share a no-limits partnership that their leaders inked last year. And joining me now for more is Temur Umarov, a fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He's an expert on China-Russia relations and Central Asian countries' foreign policies. Temur, welcome. There's been quite a buzz about China possibly playing the role of mediator in the Ukraine war. What interest does Beijing have in doing so? First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, when it comes to Xi Jinping's visit to Moscow, I think the intention behind China's activization around the situation with uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine would be um, several points. First of all, uh, China wants to keep Russia as an important asset in its further potential confrontation with the US. Here, Russia is the only country that is on the same page with Beijing and is ready to do much more uh, than Beijing itself in this confrontation. Other than that, um, China wants to prove to the world that it uh, should be considered as a global superpower. And as a global superpower, it cannot um, you know, ignore um, most uh, important conflict that we have right now in uh, geopolitical arena. And that is why this activization also is a part of that. Let's talk about this potential confrontation with the United States and therefore wanting to keep Russia on side. If this is what the aim of China is, all this talk about Russia potentially mediating in the Ukraine war would seem misplaced. Yes, I don't think that China really sees itself um, in uh, this war as a peacekeeper or a country that would bring peace uh, to Ukraine potentially. Um, that is why if we take a look at the announcements that are being made uh, from Beijing or if we take a look at the peace plan that Beijing published a month ago, uh, we won't see a real plan that potentially uh, uh, can change the situation in Ukraine. Uh, some points in this peace plan contradict each other. Um, and it's just a document that uh, Beijing would point out to any country that would potentially criticize it for ignoring this conflict. So um, when it comes to the... Please go ahead. Sorry? Please go ahead. Yes, so when it comes to... Um, the uh, war in Ukraine, um, I think China's intention here um, to um, show that it's ready uh, to provide some uh, ideas and um, at the same time not um, really get involved into this conflict. Uh, I'd like to talk about Russia-China relations uh, in an overall context. You talk about uh, China being a global superpower and showing to the world that, it, that China cannot be ignored on such an important issue. Are we also looking at a China-Russia friendship that is trying to sow the seeds of a new global world order? Yes, we might look at it from this perspective. Um, both Moscow and Beijing think that international order should be more fair toward themselves, but um, Russia and China use different instruments to um, make them look more important. Uh, when, it, when we talk about Russia, Russia uses hard power and uh, tries to disrupt all of the global processes that we've been observing for decades now. Uh, but in case of China, it's different. China wants um, to become a very important player in the international order and to change it from the inside. I'd like to talk about uh, Central Asia as well. Moscow has traditionally seen uh, this region as a part of its sphere of influence, as it were. But has that taken a dent, you think, due to the Russian reverses in the Ukraine war? 
Yes, right now it might seem that um, Russia in Central Asia is much less influential. Uh, but I think it's um, even today it's too early to jump into this conclusion. Um, Russia still uh, should be considered as a very important uh, power here um, in Central Asia, and most importantly, this is happening before because of the mutual trust that exists between the political elites here in the countries of Central Asia and in Russia. And no other country, whether it's China or Turkey or uh, the US, has this level of trust with the elites. Um, but when we talk about long term, uh, Russia's presence in Central Asia will inevitably decline. And um, these, um, you know, vacuum uh, would be replaced by other countries. And China here is uh, the number one country that would be ready to do that. We'll leave it there for the time being, but thank you so much for joining us today. Temur Umarov from the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.